Lance here, and what I want to share with you guys today is proper positioning for your power wheel crawl from hands all the way through to your feet. So uh, number one is getting the power wheel on your feet properly. I always tip it like that. As we're just crawling, you don't have to put the rubber strap on your feet. So one inch past this, about one inch past the Velcro is all you need your toes to be in the power wheel. As you noticed, I didn't even have to strap them. When I'm done, just take your feet out. You're good to go. So, drop them in there so they're about an inch past the edge of the Velcro. Then with your feet, a lot of people will crawl with their toes pointed, which means everything in the core turns off. So you want the whole body engaged. And if you saw the video from Olivia yesterday, she was talking a lot about engagement. What she means by that is from the tip of your toes, not here, to pull the toes up and that instantly activates your legs. So your legs should be engaged, nice and strong and straight. Then when we're talking about the hips, you want to brace the butt and the, bell, and the belly. So we don't want the butt to be relaxed because if the butt relaxes, then there's more pressure on the belly, the core, to be tight. So toes are pulled, legs are straight, butt and belly engaged. Or look at the opposite if I don't do those. You start hanging, which leads to lower back pain. So pull the toes, straighten the legs, tighten the butt and the belly. The next part is the upper body. You want to keep your shoulder blades pulled back. A lot of times people will round their back, but what this leads to is a collapse in the neck. It'll be like this, okay? And we don't want that. I want the chest out and the lengthening through the crown of the head. So our full alignment so far is pull the toes, legs straight, butt and belly engaged, and the shoulders are back. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Your next part is the hands. Don't turn them out like this, because that will force the elbows to roll, go forward and hyperextend the elbows. We don't want that. Hands should be at about 10 and 2 o'clock like this. You can have them straight ahead, but that takes a lot more wrist mobility and stability. So I suggest turn them out just a bit. So from here, we want toes pulled up, legs straight, butt and belly engaged, chest out, lengthening through the crown of the head, arms straight, and the hands turned out to 10 and 2 o'clock. If you have this posture when you're walking and you maintain it, you're easily, you're making the power wheel a stronger movement than collapsing in it and, and really struggling to do all aspects of it. Forward, backwards, making those turns, you know, because we walk forward fast and then we stop and we come backwards. If you're collapsed in any area, you're gonna struggle with this. So listen to those points, the feet pulled, legs straight, butt and belly engaged, shoulders back, lengthen through the crown of the head, keep those arms straight, hands out at 10 and two o'clock, and you'll be good to go. Foot, strength level, you're rolling out. About a yard, power level, roll out to your chest. And silverbacks, like what I'm gonna do, we're gonna roll out to our chest and then do a push-up in between each rep. All right, you can't face on, let's go. 